You could see your heartbeat in a blood pressure cuff, which usually has a dial on it like this, but we've replaced the dial with a pressure sensor. And this particular pressure sensor is um, a powered device with an amplifier. And you'll use these leads to connect to the power source, the ground, and the uh, sensor output. And once you have built your circuit, you'll simply just connect it like this. Okay, in terms of our ISOM idea, uh, we are taking the output of the sensor, and that was going to give us a measure of voltage with respect to time. And it's probably going to look like this. After we you know, pump up and cut off our blood pressure, we're going to let the air out slowly, and the pressure will drop, and then we'll have these little blips on the pressure signal that will be our heartbeat. So what we're interested in measuring is really that uh, profile of the heartbeat. So just pulling out this detailed information when your heart, uh, the, when your pulse starts to come through the cuff, and you'll see that it, it um, will give you an indication of every single little heartbeat that is inside um, those pressure changes from your, your um, arteries allowing the blood to come through. Now, this pressure sensor uh, will be the input for our, our instrumentation circuit. And the circuit will have several stages. The first stage is going to be a filter. And that filter will be followed by a, an amplifier. And that amplifier will be followed by another filter. So these are the design elements for you. The challenge in this lab is to design these filters and amplifiers so that you can take out this slowly varying uh, voltage signal and then amplify with the amplifier the actual heartbeat and then you know there'll be some post-processing that's the signal after the amplification. So if we look at the basic layout of the circuit after the first stage of filtering there'll be this amplifier and you're going to use an active amplifier configuration which uses an op amp. So you've got two resistors, R1 and R2, and the output of that amplifier is sent to the second stage of filtering. So again, this is the key item of design, this amplifier. Well, well you've done, you've done you know, um, filters before, so that will be familiar to you. So that we need an equation for the output of this amplifier, and how that output varies with the R1 and R2 values. This is in the, the video that Brian has uh, prepared for us.